Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. Today we have a new build. It's a 2006 GMC Sierra 1500. Now, it's got the V8 in it, the 5.3, but it's only two wheel drive. So this little guy came all the way from Houston, Texas. Underneath, super clean, no rust. Just the way I like them. Looks like might have turned in front of somebody. So we're gonna need a rear door, a front door, a piece of the rocker, a little cab corner here, and straighten some dents on the bedside. Now, if you remember from that 2004 Silverado I did, I have a leftover cab, so I have all of these parts. And we're gonna find out why I chose to swap the cab on the 2004, because what it's gonna to take to fix this one, which isn't even hit as hard as the 2004, is quite a bit more work than swapping a cab. There's a couple of scuffs here and there. Not bad for a 15 year old truck. So we got a little paint work to do. Of course, the tops of the doors are starting to peel. The clear coat's starting to peel. And that's what you get when you got the nice hot Texas sun. So we're gonna have to paint the tops of the doors. There's a couple little dents to fix over there. We'll need some tires. So let's get into it. First, we gotta get it off the trailer. But the most surprising part of this entire build the battery is not dead. I could have drove this thing back from Houston. And I did think about it. Let's start tearing it apart, see just how big our job's gonna be. It's a good sign, at least the door opens. Let's get some of this interior out so we can see just how bad the damage is inside. Pull out the sill plate, toss that in the pile. Pull out the front sill plate. Yank it out from underneath the seat. And we'll pull out the B pillar trim. Half of it's all faded from that Texas sun. Must have had the window open a lot. So we'll weasel it out of there. That pillar's a little close to the seat. Now we can unbolt our rear seats, fold them down. We don't need to pull this cover off it. Somebody already did. Pull that cover off, and we can get to that bolt. Ah, 
head over to the other side. No cover on this side either. There's one little cap in the center. Pop that off of there. Now I'll fold the back of the seats down so we can get to the rest of the bolts. Pop this little cover off of here. And now we can see our bolts, nuts actually. And we got those unbolted. Now we're gonna separate the two seats. These things are pretty heavy and awkward. So at least when they're a little bit smaller, they're easier to manage. You can't take them out as an assembly, but no thanks. Now we'll pull the front seats out, a couple little covers in the center. It's supposed to be a cover over the wires, but that was not included in this purchase. We'll pull our bolts out. If you don't have an inverted Torx that big, an 11 millimeter seems to work. We'll unplug our wires. And we'll slide our seat back. It's not power, so unplugging it doesn't matter. There's a couple nuts in the front. Those are also inverted Torx. They're a little bit bigger than the back, so a 15 millimeter works. I refuse to buy special tools. Even though I've taken enough of these seats out that it probably would have warranted it. So now we can pull our seat out of here. Looks like that seat cover's seen better days. Hopefully the seat underneath it, it's pretty nice. Now we'll do the passenger side, pull our little cover off, unbolt it. Unplug it, slide the seat back, and I'll bolt the front of the seat. I did order a pizza about 20 minutes ago. Some help should be along shortly. Not so sure about the pizza. Lift our seat out of here. The seat cover isn't doing any better. I know we pull our center console out. With no bolts in it, it's just held in by the two seats. Looks like there's some delicious stuff attached to the bottom of it. I got a snack for later. So now we'll pull our rear door off. Since we have this B-pillar trim out, we can get our plug off of here. We'll push the tabs in on the outside. Pull the plug out. And there's one more connector I couldn't get to on the bottom. Pull the bolt out of the lower hinge. Pull the bolt out of the door check and pull the bolt out of the upper hinge. And the pizza girl's here. Yeah, no pizza. One of these days though. So we'll wiggle the door and pry it up at the same time. Doesn't exactly slide off like it's supposed to since the hinges aren't aligned anymore. So now we'll get these really heavy and awkward seats out. Since the door's out of the way, it fits a lot easier. There's no good way to handle them. They like to fold and unfold and... We'll take the seats out this side since we don't have to worry about scratching up the door openings. I think all the damage is already done. Well, it looks like the CrossFitter found a random abandoned tire, so she will be of no help for a while. We can pull our jack tools out of here and pull our jack out of here. Just turn it to release the jack, take it out of its bracket, then we'll unbolt the bracket. We need to get the carpeting out of the way, so we gotta pull all this stuff off. Now we can pull off our sill plates on the passenger side, and it broke that one. Pull off our B pillar trim. And our carpeting's nice and dry on top. We 
we can pull our vent out of there, pull our wiring harness out of there. We're just going to fold the carpeting up. Pull the back of the carpeting over the studs. And fold it forward. To reveal some completely soaked padding. Hmm. Turns out that even in the Texas sun, it doesn't dry out that padding. I believe I made a video on that. And I believe people argued with me. Hmm. It's almost like I've done this before. So now we're going to have to pull our whole padding and carpeting out so we can dry it out properly. We'll unbolt the dash support as it goes around the carpeting. Pull the carpet out. Just know that if you are currently typing a comment that this would be a perfect time to clean the carpet, you are a clean freak. Look at all the wheel liners GM could have made out of this. We'll unclip the ductwork from the floor. Pop it out of there. Now we'll pop our wiring harness off. One ground wire on the passenger side. Unplug our airbag module. And we'll pull the padding out from underneath that harness. And we'll go wash it off real good. Let it dry. Pull the trim panel off the back of the cab. Just a little wiggle and pull. Bunch of clips that hold it on. That reveals the screws for the seat pillar trim. So we'll pull those out. We'll unbolt the bottom of the seat belt. We'll unclip our seat pillar trim. It's got a little crack in it. So we're probably going to have to replace it. Struggle. It's kind of wedged in there. So that seat pillar's rolled in. And I'm losing my patience with it. One clip just doesn't want to play nice. Exhausted my patience. It's time to get this piece out of here. And now it has a slightly larger crack in it. It's definitely going in the pile now. Oh well. I hope Scott's GM Truck Emporium has some. So we'll pull our wiring harness off the floor. Wiring harness. It's one wire. It's just a power wire for the rear defroster. We can pull the sill plate bracket off. And now we can see how bad our floor is. Little buckle in there. The majority is on the outside, but there is some on the inside. A B pillar is in a little bit. You can see the floor is all wrinkled up here. That's why our door doesn't open and close properly. So we're going to have to pull all that out. But first, we're going to make the clean freaks happy. I'm going to vacuum out our carpeting while it's out. I'm not going to clean it. That's a detailing gnome's job. But I'll let him do it before we put the carpeting back in. 
definitely needs a good cleaning. And our mobile frame rack is all set up. So, let's start pulling. Put our clamp on the front, behind the B-pillar. Bend it down. We'll attach our Scott-powered ram. And start pulling on it. I actually did want to put this one up on the frame rack, but the frame rack was busy, and I want to get this done. So you do what you got to do. It does the same thing. The forks are up against the frame, so I'm just pulling against the frame. We'll put some tension on it, then we'll stress relieve it. As we hammer, those kinks come out and the piece moves out. Allow us to put a little more tension on it and keep going. Pulling all those kinks out of the floor, getting that B pillar where it belongs so our door opens and closes properly. And if we're lucky, our rear door will actually fit. So now we're going to pull out the bottom of the C pillar. Same way, just move the clamp in the back, and start pulling. Now we're going to pull out the center. Could have pulled more of this at once, but the Scott powered ram isn't quite the same as the frame rack ram. So we got to do it in little parts. Stress relieve that piece on the inside. And now we're going to open it up with our favorite tool, the pneumatic can opener. I've done a few of these, but it's been a while, so I've forgotten what's inside. We're going to find out. I'm just going to cut this outer rocker off. It's a shame since it's not routed out, like all the ones up here. Bend it out of the way. We'll cut it across the bottom. Turns out, there's nothing inside. Newer ones have three panels in there. This one only has the inner panel and the outer panel. So it looks pretty easy. The safety experts taking a huge loss today. But feel free to comment on the safety gear that I'm not wearing as if you actually cared about my safety. And we're just trying to find some kind of fault. Pile. Now we'll put our used door up there from Scott's GM Truck Emporium. Forklift's kind of in the way. Can't quite fit in there. We'll get it. Hope I got it cheap. The door's the wrong color, but it is rust free from Georgia. Texas truck with a Georgia rear door and a front door from yet another state, which we're going to find out soon. I sold my Georgia door. Had to replace it. Trying to smash the plug. Too late. We did. It's okay, the original one will work. Bolt our door in. No need it falling on the floor. It's a good sign if the door actually bolts up. Won't close because front door is a little bent at the bottom. It's all collapsed on the inside. So we're going to use our door adjustment tool. Realign the bottom of it. There we go. Now we can pull our cab corner out a little bit. I didn't use any clamps, I just put the hook on the part that I had cut out. 
We're going to change this cab corner anyway, but I want to get the parts underneath that are attached to it out where they belong. This cab corner is kind of collapsed and rolled back, so... Stress relieve the inside that we're probably going to end up cutting off anyway. I haven't decided yet. I haven't cut the new parts yet. So our gaps are close. There'll be a little more fine tuning with the poles when we find out exactly what parts we're saving and what parts we're getting rid of. So that's all we have time for today. Next time we come back, we'll start piecing our rocker in. We'll get our bed off of there so we can work on the back of our cab corner and start making this look like a truck again. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.